Hi there, welcome back to our second exciting tutorial on Adobe Photoshop Mix. In the first part of this series, we looked at Photoshop Mix layers, the selection process, and also blending modes. In the first part of the tutorial on Photoshop Mix, we took one of my architectural images that had a very plain sky. We added clouds and we corrected the perspective. In this video, we're going to be looking at the shake reduction and also the content aware fill feature. All right, let's dive into Adobe Photoshop Mix. Once it opens up, you'll see my project. This was the completed project from the last tutorial. Uh, I encourage you to go back and watch it if you have not. Now, to create a new project, we'll go to the plus sign. I'm going to choose an image on my phone. I've already uploaded three images for today that we're going to be using. Uh, the first one, we're going to be looking at the shake reduction. So let's go ahead and open up an, a portrait image that I have taken. Now, as you can see, when I zoom in on this, uh, this is a very uh, blurry image. That's because uh, as I was taking the image, I was intentionally shaking the camera. Now, down at the bottom, you'll find our tools. We looked at all of these last time. I'm not going to bother going into them. After the blend and upright, we have shake reduction. We can go into shake reduction. It'll say uploading asset, rendering shake reduction. And once it opens up, it's going to give us uh, several different options for us to choose from. Okay, it's an automatic feature. There's nothing that we can really do to adjust this. Um, Photoshop Mix does this for us, and it gives us three options. So here's the original, and then it gives us shake reduction option number one, which it sharpens the image a lot. Uh, this is reduction two and reduction three. I think that uh, the shake reduction number three here has uh, sharpened both of my eyes here fairly well. So I think for this image, I'd probably use option number three. This is gonna work fantastically for a lot of your images that will be taken in low light. Maybe there's some action. Maybe you have some very active kids that it's hard to capture their picture. So this shake reduction is, is fantastic for trying to sharpen those images. Great, I, I really like this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and probably save this project, export it, upload it to Instagram or, or whatever I might wanna do. I like that, I like this image. Um, let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning and I'm going to create a new project. Okay, so I'm gonna try this uh, content aware fill twice. First, I'm going to try it on uh, one of my architectural images, and then I'm going to try it on a portrait. This is a raw file that I'm editing in Photoshop Mix on my mobile app. So fantastic that I'm able to be able to uh, work here on that. Typically with an image, you're going to want to go into the adjustments. As I talked about in the first video, you want to work with exposure first. Find your exposure. Remember, the exposure is going to be working with the midtones. Uh, then I like to probably either open up the shadows or reduce the highlights. And if I wanted to adjust the colors, I'd go into temperature and maybe make it a little bit warmer or cooler. I think it was fine where it was, maybe a little bit uh, warmer there. Okay, so moving right along over to the content aware fill. This is a model house that I took in Seoul last summer before I left. I like using this image as a demonstration because there's a lot of stickers and labels that were uh, left around the uh, furniture that I needed to remove. So let's use this as a demonstration. The content aware fill feature is a more complex kind of a clone stamp or heel tool brush because it's gonna be trying to select the area around it that's very similar to it. 
Let me zoom in over here and I'll click my brush here. You'll see the basic selection. All right. And when I select this, it's going to become red, showing that it's selected. And that's showing what area is going to be affected. Then I can fill. Wait for it to render and it's gone. Beautiful. Moving right, right along down to uh, this uh, cushioned area. I'll come down here to this cushioned area, make a selection, click fill. Isn't that great? It's like magic. And there's lots of areas around here that need to be fixed. Let's try this window over here. Be sure that you zoom in on your image. Anytime you're editing an image, zoom in at about 200% or greater so that we can see what is being edited. Isn't that fantastic? I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer. Okay, so looking right here, there's some artifacts that are left over. Zoomed in, I'm gonna just go ahead and click those pixels and fill. Voila, look at that. Isn't that great? It's gone. Now I would continue to do this for the rest of the image uh, for my portfolio, but it's already uploaded to my website. Let's try this with portraits. I'm gonna close this out and open up a portrait. Okay, so moving on, opening up a portrait here. Again, this image is about a year ago. This is a portrait of me and my son. And going over to the content aware fill, uh, my son doesn't need the corrections as much as I do. Let's try this here on some of those dots. Okay, fill, gone. Fill, and gone. Fill. and gone. Fill. And gone. Fill. And then gone. All right, fill, fill, fill. Yeah, I guess that's okay. Wow, I look a lot uh, younger there. <laughs> okay, anything else we wanna fix? I think we're good. So there you go, there's the content to wear filter. I do think that the healing brush in Photoshop Fix was better for portraits. As I'm working with the content aware fill brush, I feel that it does have limitations when I'm doing portraits. In the last video, when we were using the heal brush in Photoshop Fix, especially with portraits, I think it was very useful because it, it just seems very intuitive for portraits. Whereas with Photoshop Mix, I do feel that the content aware fill brush is more meant for, for um, objects and other kind of images, landscapes. Uh, and today we did the uh, architectural image as well. So where you can do the content aware fill brush for portraits here in Photoshop Mix, I do feel like that heel brush was a lot better in Photoshop Fix. But that content aware fill is really 
amazing for objects and textures and patterns like sofas and walls and windows and all kinds of things like that. And skin tones do have textures, but a lot of times with the textures of the face, you don't want it to be copy pixel for pixel. You want to copy it and you want to kind of reduce the blemishes. So for example, like the, um, the dark circles under my eyes or the wrinkles in my skin, I don't want to do complete digital Botox with it, completely removing it. I want to sort of reduce that effect. I want to reduce the hardness of the lines so that my age is still there. It's just a lot softer and a lot more pleasant as a portrait. This video wraps up the tutorial on Photoshop Express, Photoshop Fix, Photoshop Mix. I do encourage you to check out the other tutorials that I've uploaded on Photoshop Express. Photoshop Fix, and the first part of Adobe Photoshop Mix. As always, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.